Egypt, flying to the kingdom of Bahrain, our plane was largely empty. You definitely know you're heading into an area of unrest when you are one of the only people on the plane uh, headed to that country. Days after the Egyptian revolution toppled President Hosni Mubarak, Bahraini citizens took to their streets to demand reform. Bahrain has been ruled by the Al Khalifa family, which is Sunni, for over two centuries. The largely Shia population has long complained of discrimination. Most of the population attended the protests. The Crown Prince went on TV calling for dialogue. But when unarmed protesters were killed by the Bahraini police, the hopes for reforms dimmed. Dozens of tanks were brought in from Saudi Arabia to quash the rebellion. When we arrived, the streets were silent. We've come across a lot of military checkpoints just driving around here, and you see the guys standing there with their guns, and they're all wearing masks covering their face. Even more disturbing, many of the people we came to Bahrain to see had been arrested or gone into hiding. Hello, uh, this is Ali Abdel Imam. I'm the creator and founder of Bahrain Online. <laughs> Ali Abdulamam's website, Bahrain Online, was a virtual coffee shop where Bahrainis could openly discuss politics and the events of the day. Until it was censored. Just days before we got here, Ali, the father of three young children, disappeared. He's a very loving person, respected person in society. Nabil Rajab is a close friend of Ali Abdulamam. What is Bahrain Online? Why is it so feared by the government? Bahrain Online is the oldest uh, chatting forum that we have, and all the opposition, which is mostly Shia, are active there. And that is disturbing the government because it is the busiest the website we have in Bahrain. I just want to be uh, free in my thought, free in my speech. For years, Ali ran the popular website secretly. Everybody thought it is an engine where many people controlling it. It's only one guy. For many years, nobody knows who is the guy behind it. Unfortunately, he paid a lot of price for this uh, activism. He lost his job. Ali was an engineer for Gulf Air, the government-owned airline. In September 2010, he was arrested for spreading, quote, false information. And I told him just to wait for me. Uh, half an hour, I'll call you back and I'll get a lawyer to go with you. I called him half an hour, he did not reply. From that moment, he disappeared. The message went out across the blogosphere. Free Ali Abdulamam. When the protesters took to the streets on February 14th, this was one of their demands. And the royal family listened. The moment he got out of the prison, he joined the protest again. It didn't deter him? No, it did not. I mean, I was surprised. Those uh, people who came out, they were tortured very badly. And all of them, you could see the mark of torture in their bodies six months later. Uh, this revelation is coming from the internet. Ali spoke about the torture to Al Jazeera. The failure, which is the hardest thing, they put something under your leg and then they, they just tied your legs. Then they put handcuff in your hand, and your hand should be like here. Then they put you like this, and your, my face should be like this, and they hit you in your feet, feet and legs. We asked Bahrain's foreign minister about Ali. We had planned to interview him, and we saw online that he had gone missing, and security forces had raided his home overnight a couple weeks ago. Why were security forces I'm not trying sure. to arrest Ali Abdulamam? I'm not sure whether he's one of the arrested or not, but if he was arrested, there must be something against him because this is not the first time he got arrested. Hundreds of people have been arrested in Bahrain, many of them professionals, lawyers, teachers, journalists. Five of them died in police custody. Their bodies showed signs of brutal torture. 
On May 5th, the government charged Ali and 20 others with organizing, quote, a terrorist group, attempting to, quote, overthrow the government by force. But they've provided no evidence. Nabil Rajab is also the president of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, which has been using social media to document abuses. He says all human rights defenders are targets. My house was raided a few nights ago. What happened when, when the police came and raided your house? It's not police. It's uh, around 25 masked men uh, entered my house. They just took me to the bedroom, handcuffed me in front of my daughter and start searching the house. And, and what did you do when your dad was taken away? What did you do online? What was she doing Facebook? You went right to Facebook and told everyone that your dad had been taken away? Yeah. We should go inside. Because they're obviously looking at this house. When we return, our own run-in with Bahrain's masked men. Protesters seem to have disappeared from Bahrain's capital thanks to the intense military crackdown. We ventured into another side of Bahrain, a side the government didn't want the world to see, to find out where they've gone. We drove to the Shia villages, passing military checkpoints as we left the capital. So we're going to hang out with these protesters for a little bit. This is what the protests look like today. Young boys who've been hit with tear gas. We smelled it ourselves. My eyes are burning. It feels like I shot a lemon into my eyes. And uh, you can feel it in your throat right now. Uh, it's hard to breathe. We're just a short drive from the naval base of the United States Fifth Fleet. Human rights advocate Nabil Rajab is our guide. So this is the tear gas that they've been using? It's uh, three pieces of tear gas comes uh, from here. And the, I did, are these are them? No, this is another thing, either for the rubber bullet or for the tear gas, a different type of tear gas. The neighborhood looks like a war zone. People spray painted the names of the martyrs on the walls, but then it's been covered up with this white paint by the government. I mean, it's everywhere. We don't want to see killing in our country. Online, advocates like Rajab say security forces have been shooting into neighborhoods with birdshot every day, striking unarmed civilians. They've been documenting the wounds on Facebook. And he said already I removed around 40 from my body in the hospital. This is says that the, the, the police have been using this to shoot them. They're just little pellets they get in the body. Look what something that small can do, you see? where he has them all over. They shoot it from very close distance. That's why it's been killing people. And this one, you can, with one shot, you can hit 20, 30 people at once. Here you can feel where some of the pellets are still in his body. Still in his body because he's too scared to return to the hospital after the military took it over last month. So he got out of the hospital bed and ran away. Yeah, because he was afraid. Doctors and human rights organizations accuse security forces of using hospitals to identify, capture, and torture protesters. Oh my God, what happened to him? Sound bomb. A sound bomb? Yeah. That's what he calls a flashbang grenade. You have people wounded every day and you don't know how to deal with them. You don't know where to take them. Doctors are getting beaten, tortured inside the hospital. Nurses getting arrested and beaten people. But Bahrain's foreign minister denies the government is attacking or torturing anyone. The police would not walk into a neighborhood and start shooting people. So they're not shooting into the neighborhoods right now? No, no, no. They won't go and attack a neighborhood unless they are looking for someone. The protesters can't compete with the government's weapons, but they still have the Internet. Can you raise your hand if you have a Facebook account? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Our gun is Facebook. 
100 person uh, everything's happening all in all country it's by facebook as we traveled through the villages the skies were often patrolled by helicopters when we reached rajab's home suddenly half a dozen military and police vehicles surrounded us what are they doing about 20 men wearing black ski masks some in civilian clothing pointed machine guns at us they forced us to get on the ground at gunpoint they erased all the video they found then we were taken to a police station and interrogated for nearly six hours before being released Bahrain's foreign minister says our detention is part of the new necessary security in the country. It had to, do, to be done nowadays during this period of restoring law and order in a way that protects everyone, including your team. Is that unusual for, for masked men with, with guns? I mean, there were about 20 of them uh, appro approached us. Well, it's unusual because the whole situation around us in Bahrain is unusual. We have never seen this before in our lifetime. After we are detained, government minders are attached to our team at all times. They do not allow us to film any of the tanks or soldiers. Come on, we have, how can we not shoot this stuff? Our minders tell us there are no protests. Mm -hmm. if there's can we a, do the protest? What protest? There's no protest. The minders instead bring us to see the nice things in Bahrain. Enter in through here. They take us to see the mall. So we're, I guess, going to go shopping. Meanwhile, as we are being minded, human rights workers tell us security forces continue to raid homes late at night, taking the opposition away, one by one, at gunpoint. And Ali Abdullah Mom is still missing. Many of the people we met in Tunisia, Egypt, and Bahrain, it appears the so-called Arab Spring may be losing its bloom. The Tunisian government has once again started to censor political content. And in Egypt, demonstrators are still protesting alleged torture at the hands of the military. In Syria, Yemen, and Libya, Government troops have opened fire on protesters, killing thousands. But this online revolution is still shaking the foundations of some of the world's most repressive regimes. Governments may be able to silence individual voices of protest, but they can't put the genie back in the bottle. And they can't stop the I-Revolution.